Welcome back to Cambridge IGCSE Computer Science and the second video to support Chapter 2 Data Transmission. We're going to follow on from the last video where we talked about data packets and this time we're going to look at methods of data transmission and we're also going to cover USB, the universal serial bus. So let's start by talking about data transmission. Data transmission can be either over a short distance, for example, computer to printer, or over a long distance, for example, from one computer to another in a global network. We're talking about the movement of data between these devices. Essentially, three factors need to be considered when transmitting data. First of all, the direction of data transmission, for example, can data transmit in one direction only, or does it need to be in both directions? Secondly, the method of transmission, for example, how many bits can be sent at the same time? And finally, how will data be synchronized? Uh, that is, how to make sure the received data is in the correct order? Well, when we're sending this data, or transmitting this data rather, between devices, um, we can do it in several different ways. Data can be transferred from one point to another using various methods such as copper cable using electrical pulses, um, wireless, of course, using radio frequency, including Bluetooth, um, optical fiber using light, and there's a cable there that you can see, and finally infrared. Now, um, it's not in the book, but it, I do want to cover this a little bit because it's interesting in terms of where we've come from. Of course, the world's a big place, and back in 1858, the first cable, some 2,500 miles long, which will be about 4,000 kilometers, um, was laid across the Atlantic. For each mile of cable, 133 miles of copper and iron wire were needed. The total weight was one ton per mile. Um, and as you can see in the next slide, um, there's rather more than that single cable that started the ball rolling and we've got hundreds and hundreds of cables now um, delivering data across the world. The reason I've put this slide in is that some of you may have thought that everything was done by s satellites in terms of sending information globally. Well, as you can see there, that is not the case. And finally, let's have a little look at bandwidth. Of course, um, bandwidth is a measurement of how much data can be passed down a cable at any one time. The bigger the bandwidth, of course, the more data can be transmitted. Ideally, if you are downloading or receiving um, files, large files, from the internet. Okay, and now I want to move on to the two types of data transmission. And we'll start with serial transmission. This is where bits are sent one signal, one bit at a time, over a single wire. Very high data transfer rates can be achieved. For example, using fiber optic cable, data transfer rates ranging from around 50 megabits per second, that's MBS, to 100 gigabytes per second, GBS, can be achieved. And of course, as we mentioned before, serial data transmission um, uses, or sometimes uses, um, USB, universal serial bus cabling. The other type of data transmission is parallel data transmission. And this occurs where several bits of data, usually one bit, are sent down several channels or wires at the same time. Sent down a parallel cable. Each wire channel transmits one bit. And you can see there in the diagram, we've got different cables transmitting different bits and bytes of data. Now, parallel data transmission works well over short distances, but over longer distances, for example, over 20 meters, data can become skewed. That is, the data can arrive unsynchronized or not at the same time, and bits can arrive out of order. The longer the wire, the worse this can be. It is, however, a faster method of data transmission than serial. Therefore, the, the internal circuits in a computer use parallel data transmission since the distance travel between components is very short and a high-speed transmission is essential. 
if you look inside a desktop computer, maybe an older desktop computer, you'll see these wide ribbon cables. I've put a picture there, um, known as parallel ATX cables. These are used inside computers, as I said, to connect components and drives, and they usually come in strips of 8, 16, or 32 bits um, that can be sent down each cable, each wire at the same time. The advantages of serial over parallel are smaller, simpler, and has cheaper connectors, such as those used for smartphones. Um, crosstalk creates interference between parallel lines and can result in corrupted words which then need to be retransmitted. Serial links are more reliable over much greater distances than parallel links. And I've put some questions here. Um, based on what we've learned so far, um, just something for you to have a look at, which type of transmission cable would you use for the following? And have a little think about that and see whether you think serial or parallel would be the best option for those four situations. I'll put the answers in the comments below. Okay, transmission directions. Now we're going to look at three different types of transmission directions, simplex, duplex, and half duplex. But what do these mean? Um, the terms referring to the direction of data during transmission. These terms can be used in conjunction with serial and parallel transmission terminology. As we might have mentioned before, I'm sure we have, both parallel and serial can transmit information or data in both directions. But we're going to look at that in more detail now. So first of all, we've got something called simplex transmission. Basically all this is, is data, trans, uh, data travels in one direction only. For example, using used for sending data from a keyboard, when you're typing on a keyboard, to the CPU inside the computer. It's only going in one direction. The CPU does not send information back to the keyboard. Secondly, half duplex transmission. Um, in this case, data can travel in both directions across a single cable but not simultaneously. Um, used in parallel printer cables, text is sent to the printer and the printer can send out um, an out of paper message um, back to the computer, but only when the computer has finished sending the text. A good example there. So it's going in one direction and it waits. It's a bit like a telephone conversation. I start talking when I finished, the person at the other end starts talking, and so on and so forth. Walkie talkies is probably a better example there. And finally, full duplex transmission. This is where um, data can travel simultaneously in both directions um, using two cables, commonly used in fiber optic um, technology, networking, or internet cables for upload and download. And I've just put here the comparisons between serial and parallel cabling. So serial, um, there's less risk of external interference than parallel due to fewer wires. More reliable transmission over long distances. Transmitted bits won't have the risk of being skewed, that is out of synchronization. Used if the amount of data being sent is relatively small, since transmission rate is slower than parallel. Um, for example, USB uses this method of data transmission. Used to send data over long distances, for example, telephone lines. Less expensive than parallel due to fewer hardware requirements. And for parallel, parallel fast, faster rate of data transmission than serial over those short distances. Works well over shorter distances, for example, used um, in internal pathways on computer circuit boards. Since several channels, wires used to transmit data, the bits can arrive out of synchronization or can be skewed. It's a preferred method when speed is important. If data is time sensitive, parallel is the most appropriate transmission method. Parallel ports require um, more hardware, making them more expensive to implement than serial ports. And it's easy to program input output operations when, si when parallel is used. Okay, that's it for that. We'll move on now to Universal Serial Bus. As the name suggests, the Universal Serial Bus, or USB, as we probably know it better, is a form of serial data transmission. 
USB is now the most common type of input-output port found on computers and has led to a standardization method for the transfer of data between devices and a computer. It's important to note that USB allows both half-duplex and full-duplex data transmission. USB ports and cable connectors look like this with the three, you can just see it there, the three prong symbol. Note, now this is important, this little diagram here, this, this um, piece of hardware, this is not a USB. It's a flash drive or a pen drive or it's even sometimes called a USB memory stick. If it appears on your exam paper, please don't put down that this is USB. It happens every, every year, every time it happens with my students. This is not a USB. Stop putting down that this is a USB. It's for saving files too. As you can see here, you've got four wires inside a shielded cable with two wires for power, that's the red and the black, and the other two, white and green, are for the data transmission. When a device is plugged into a computer using one of the USB ports, um, the computer automatically detects that a device is present. This is due to a small charge in changing the voltage on the data signal wire of the USB cable. The device is automatically recognized and the appropriate device driver software is loaded up so that the computer and device can communicate effectively. If a new device is detected, the computer will look for the device driver that matches the device, and if this is not available, the user is prompted to download the appropriate driver um, software, usually from the internet. Now, here are the benefits and the drawbacks. The benefits for the USB. Um, devices plugged into the computer are automatically detected and device drivers are automatically loaded up. Connections can only fit one way, preventing incorrect um, connections being made. You can only put the um, put the, the cable or the cable connector into the port in one direction. It has become an industrial standard which means considerable support is available. Um, it can support different data transmission rates from 1.5 megabits per second to 5 gigabytes per second no need for external power sources since the cable supplies is plus 5 volts of power. Now it's plus 5 volts on a old USB cable, it's plus 20 volts on the new um, USB-C cable. Which means devices will charge up if you plug something into your MacBook for example. Um, it will The MacBook will charge it. Um, there's no need for... Hang on, I've read that bit. USB protocol notifies the transmitter to res to USB protocol not, not USB protocol notifies the transmitter to retransmit data if any errors are detected. This leads to error-free data transmission. It is relatively easy to add more USB ports if necessary um, by using USB hubs. USB is backward compatible. USB is backward compatible, that is, older versions are still supported. Now the drawbacks, um, standard USB only supports a maximum cable length of 5 meters. Beyond that, USB hubs are needed to extend the cable length. Even though USB is backward compatible, very early USB standards, version 1, may not always be supported by the latest computers. It's the new MacBook Pro, for example, new MacBook Air does not support the old USB standard sizes. Um, even the latest version 3, V3, the version 4 IV4 USB-C systems have a data transfer rate which is slow compared to, for example, Ethernet connections. Um, note USB version 2 has a maximum data transfer rate of 480 megabits per second. That is it for data transmission and universal serial bus. Thank you very, very much indeed for watching. Um, next time we'll be looking at various um, methods of error detection. But in the meantime, if you haven't already, please subscribe. Please um, click on the little bell for notifications. Um, 
thank you very much indeed for watching. See you next time.